it's early, six o'clock in the morning, and I'm traveling again. I travel a lot. I think I've learned some lessons. So I'm gonna share with you my tips and my tricks. I'm traveling from Florence to Paris today. Now let's go. If you can, take a taxi. It may cost more, but it gets you there on time and you know where you're going. You could take a bus, you could take a train to get to the airport, but the risk is that you get on the wrong bus, you get on the wrong train, or you miss your connection altogether. With a taxi, you know you're going where you need to go. And a funny story, one time I was going to the United Arab Emirates, I had to take a train down to Rome, but somehow, mysteriously, we were in Tuscany near Arezzo, and the train stopped still for around 45 minutes. Well, that meant by the time I got to the Rome airport, I was too late to check in my bag, and because I couldn't check in my bag, I was unable to fly, and that meant I had to wait in the airport all day to get my next flight. So take a taxi. Fly early if you can. Get on that early flight. It gives you more options if you're if you get delayed or if you get bumped from a flight or if your flight gets canceled, at least you have a chance to get on a new flight in the same day. And if your flight does take off, all the better. If it's a short flight, at least you get to your destination and you still have daylight remaining. If it's a long haul flight, well that doesn't matter. But again, it gives you that option in case you get bumped from your flight or in case the flight gets canceled, you can get booked on a new flight. Take a photo of your bag. That way if they lose your bag, in addition to the luggage receipt, you can show them a photo and that will help easily locate your bag. And while we're talking about photos, before you leave the house, take a photo of your passport. Take a photo of your vaccination card or a screenshot of your vaccination card. Take a screenshot of your online booking. After you book in and you get your ticket, take a photo of the ticket. Take a photo of the luggage tag that's on your bag as well. All that stuff could come around and help you later if you need it. Check in online. Do that in the first 24 hours, the last 24 hours before your flight. That's gonna save you a lot of time because often at airports, they have a luggage only line. So that means if you just have to drop your checked in luggage, you can save time by taking that line and not have to wait in that big other long line. If you're traveling without a checked luggage, you can just go right through security and check in that's a huge time saver also another good thing about checking in online is it shows the airline your intent to show up for the flight because if the flight ends up being overbooked they start bumping customers so checking in online shows you're gonna show up and be ready for that flight now another thing as well in those last 24 hours you can often move around and select your seats for free pick a window seat you can pick an aisle seat no one picks a middle seat do they also if it's not a completely booked flight you can pick seats that have empty seats next to them so you can spread your things out and get some work done and in those final 24 hours the airline will often offer you discounts such as business class upgrades or lounge access but definitely check in online it's a huge time saver especially if you're traveling without a checked bag <laughs> now some people bring their own airport food but I don't bother Always get here, get a cappuccino, especially when you're traveling in Europe. The coffee's so good. And look at this little treat here. Uh, now, another pro tip. When you're sitting here chilling out, make sure on your phone, if you get Netflix, if you get a premium YouTube account, Italians are so loud. If you get Netflix, if you get a premium YouTube account, you can download videos, you can download the shows. So on the airline, you can view them offline so you can chill out and watch them on your phone because often on these intercontinental European flights, they don't have TV screens. So if you get bored, if you don't have a book, you got those shows on your telephone, you can watch those and chill out. <laughs> Bring a power bank. Now a lot of airlines have USB outlets so you can plug in your cable and charge your phone, but you don't want to rely on that. So bring a power bank, a battery, so you can charge your phone while you're on the flight is ideal. A pro tip is plug it in as soon as you get on the flight. That way if you fall asleep or something, your phone's gonna be charging the entire time and you get to your destination and that's when you need it. You need a complete charge on your phone because you're gonna be navigating right away. You might be calling business partners or some friends to come and meet you at the airport. So you need to have a full charge on your phone and carrying a battery pack will always make sure you're ready to go. Now in Europe, they don't call out the boarding times or call out the last call for the flights. 
often they don't in many airports around the world, so you need to pay attention. You get cozy, you find your spot to sit down, you have your Wi-Fi, you have your power, and you have your coffee, what I call the holy trinity, and you get relaxed, you start answering emails, you're watching my videos, you're giving them a thumbs up, but do not miss your flight. Be responsible, be watching the screen for the times, and be ready to go. Boarding the flight, now there are two philosophies, being first or being last. If you have a big carry-on item and you need space in the overhead, it's the best to be one of the first people boarding the flight so you find a space for your bag. If you don't have a carry-on bag, then just board at the very last minute. You have your ticket in hand, you have your seat, so you don't have to worry about anything. Now when you arrive, it's gonna take a long time before your luggage is there on the carousel, so might as well use the time to go and pee. And bonus tip, with me, I always carry my toothbrush and toothpaste, so in those long hauls, you have time to freshen up. Identify yourself, your luggage. When I buy it, I buy it some strange, different color. I got an orange suitcase, a Samsonite, that I always take with me. Samsonite, you should really sponsor me. This is a classic luggage. I got rollerblade wheels on there with special ball bearings. I put them in myself. But you wanna identify your luggage somehow if it's not a different color like orange, yellow, or red, put a ribbon around the handle because if it's one of those black pieces of luggage, you're not gonna see it in all the sea of other bags that are going around there on the conveyor belt or when they're stacked over there in lost luggage. So put a ribbon on there, personalize it somehow so it stands out. If you're getting value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see other videos like this. One thing I forgot to tell you before I rushed out of the airport is don't rush out of the airport. Take care of two essential items before you leave the airport in a foreign land. Get a local phone card with data on it because your home cellular service or data plan, it may mean that you're roaming here in a foreign country or foreign area like Europe. You can save a lot of money on roaming charges and it doesn't cost that much and you get the security that anywhere you go, you always have internet on your phone. So visit one of those local phone stores and get a SIM card now the other item of note is local cash you're in a foreign country you can't always rely on your credit card in some places prefer cash so pull out some of that local green go to the ATM stick in your bank card or your ATM card or your credit card and pull out some cash before you leave the airport because you may find that you need it and in fact I have a funny story for you because in Oman recently I didn't do that I got out there jumped into a taxi and we started to take off I asked the guy if he took credit cards he says no only cash so he stopped the taxi right away allowed me to go back in and withdraw some money and away we went renting cars or hiring cars now you can go some of those third-party agencies like booking or kayak to try to find the best bargain online I recommend going with one company and staying loyal to that company signing up and be in the loyalty program and you'll get benefits you'll get discounts on future rentals if you're always renting from them and that's what I do my go-to in Europe is sixed I usually rent cars from them they have a great fleet and they're well serviced at all the airports today however I had to go with Avis they're down there and they're preparing my car we're gonna get it and we're gonna get out of here let's talk rental car insurance because you need to think about it if you're traveling a lot and what I would recommend is if you are renting cars often if you're traveling often I would get a higher car insurance specifically for your higher cars for your rental cars so you don't have to think about getting it every time when you go to Avis when you go to Hertz you have one policy and it applies to your car all year round now I've been doing this for a couple of years and I use a brand called Quester. It's a company out of Great Britain and now they're named Riverside. So Quester or Riverside, I'll put a link down to them down in the description. It makes things super easy. So when you show up at the hire car agency, you go, you just go in and rent your car and they ask you if you want excess insurance and they try to sell you that because they get a bonus when they sell that excess insurance. And you say, no, 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 I'm good. I have my own hire car insurance and that saves you a lot of stress and a lot of time when you're at the airport. Download some maps and have them ready for when you get to your destination. Remember back in the days we used to take screenshot after screenshot so you'd have a kind of an itinerary of how you get to your hotel and once you flew in. Well, you don't need to do that. Google Maps allows you to download maps and have them offline 
so you're ready to go. Also, what I would recommend is maps.me. It's a separate application, an offline mapping application, and it works very well. You can pin your favorite locations when you're there. I used it when I was in, check this out, a little bit of France. I used it when I was in Cuba, and it worked very, very well, so I suggest maps.me. Finally made it to the hotel. Not too bad. Now each one of these tips and tricks, they're not major game changers. Taking a battery pack, checking in early, taking the taxi to the airport, check out that car hire annual insurance. They're not game changers each individually. They're small improvements, but taken on the whole, the sum of all these little tips and tricks, these hacks, the sum of all these together, it's gonna make your traveling day that much better.